the name It's 10% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power of will 5% pleasure, 50% pain, 100% reason to remember the name After the Anthony Davis trade, what is next for the Los Angeles Lakers? As we all know by now, the Pelicans have agreed to trade Anthony Davis to the Los Angeles Lakers in a deal that includes Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, and three first round picks. Obviously that number four pick that is going to be selected in the 2019 NBA draft is part of this deal. And this is pretty big for both teams. Obviously it gives the Pelicans a new chance to start over. Zion Williamson, the number four pick. Lonzo Ball is still young, Ingram's still young. As for the Lakers, they needed to get something to surround LeBron James. Anthony Davis is, when healthy, a top five player in the league, and he's a great pairing to LeBron James. When you think about the trade deadline, it was Lonzo Ball, Ingram, Hart, Kuzma, Zubak, and three future first round picks when Magic Johnson offered that trade and the Pelicans declined. Now this time they accept the offer just for Lonzo, Ingram, Hart and three first round picks including the fourth overall pick. Look, at the end of the day they made the deal, both teams are happy. The great thing about the Lakers is Davis is only 26 years of age. So once LeBron James ends his career, they're going to keep Davis if he re-signs and they can build around him as the franchise player, which is a great franchise player to build around. And one thing to keep in mind is even with LeBron being one of the best, if not the greatest players still in this league today, he is 34 years old and he will be 35 by the time next season begins. So to keep Kuzma with Davis and still a potential chance to get a young piece of free agency gives the Lakers plenty of room to work with even at the end of the LeBron James era. For now though, he is still the king of this team and he's still looking to win championships. So we're going to discuss what is next for the Lakers and a little bit about the trade but I really want to discuss what they should do in this year's free agency, if they should make trades, who they should sign and looking towards next year as a whole. As for the Pelicans, I'll have a video on them tomorrow, but before I begin the video, I just want to say I really, really appreciate all your support recently. I'm trying to get out videos as regularly as possible, trying to get back on the grind, almost to 250,000 subscribers, so if you enjoy my channel and you want to leave a like on the video, that would be appreciated. Anyway, let me know what team you'd like to see for the What Next series after the Pelicans tomorrow, and also let me know who you think the Lakers should be targeting right now. When June ends, the Lakers will have room under the projected salary cap of $109 million to make another big trade or sign someone in free agency, plus get some bench talent, which they didn't really have a lot of this season. With that said, if Kyrie Irving, Jimmy Butler or Kemba Walker were to be a part of this team, it most likely wouldn't be for the max, simply because if they did sign a third star, the cost would be everyone on the current roster but James and Kuzma. The team would have four players, including Anthony Davis and a max free agent, with just a little bit of room exception for about $4.8 million, which is a little bit risky. And their bench depth would lack a little bit, and we've seen how that has affected teams in the past. Would you rather have a championship team or a team of champions? And when you get into the finals or the playoffs, you don't want your star players getting injured because, I mean, we just saw this year what happened with the Golden State Warriors. I'm not saying the Lakers will get injured, but what I am saying is I would prefer a champion team rather than a team of champions, if that makes sense. If the Lakers don't add a third star, they'll instead use their remaining $27.7 million to choose from the available talent pool this summer, which will create some bench depth. And we'll discuss some potential candidates now. Number one, I'm going to add all these guys together as the star player. At the end of the day, they can only get one of these guys. Kyrie Irving, Jimmy Butler, and Kemba Walker. These are the guys that I think the Lakers will go after and have a realistic chance at targeting, more so than Kawhi Leonard, Klay Thompson, Kevin Durant, or D'Angelo Russell. Now, the issue that the Lakers have is, once again, if they pay one of these guys max, it limits what they can do for their depth. But once again, they still get a third star to join the dynamic duo and also Kyle Kuzma. So it's up in the air of what they're going to do. Well, Kyrie Irving, probably not. I don't believe he'll take anything less than a max contract. And also a move back to LeBron James, to me, it may have a little bit of an effect on his overall legacy as a whole. Considering that he literally left LeBron to make his own path as a leader. And now he'll just be back with him once again as the third star because obviously you would take Davis as your first or second option and Kari as your third in my opinion. 
I don't think it will happen, honestly. I don't think Kyrie will join the Lakers. He does have a potential chance, which is why I'm giving him a 35% chance of joining LA, but I don't think he'll accept less than max. And I also think he probably has a higher chance to join a team like the Brooklyn Nets or the New York Knicks. Number two, Jimmy Butler. I can actually see him taking a little bit less than Max. He's already stated that he'd love to play in LA. He'd be a great fit defensively, and he is still a good shooter. He takes the pressure off LeBron and off Davis. And defensively, like I said, one of the best players in the league. Even if he doesn't take less than a Max contract, I still think he has a higher chance to end up in LA, and he's probably the highest chance to end up in LA than anybody, in my opinion. I give Jimmy Butler a 60% chance to end up in LA. And thirdly, out of the three stars, I'm saying Kemba Walker. Kemba Walker is one that has already stated he'll take less money, but to stay in Charlotte. And only just a few weeks ago, Walker told The Athletic that Charlotte was his first priority, citing his start there, as well as the contract that they could offer him during free agency is enticing. But ultimately, we've seen stranger things happen in the NBA. So I wouldn't be surprised if he joined a new team, and I wouldn't be surprised if that was the Lakers. He wants to win, he'd be a great fit in LA. If they don't get Kyrie Irving, a strong possibility, so I give him a 40% chance to join the Lakers. Now, let's say they don't end up with any of these guys. That leaves a lot of cap to be spent on their bench depth, and it also means that they can make a trade. I think a guy that could be a fit on this team could be Bradley Beal. I don't know how they would trade for Bradley Beal, and I don't know when that would be. Maybe halfway through next season, they can see how they're going with Davis and LeBron and Kuzma, and if it's not really working out as well as they'd like, they can trade for that third star, whether that be Bradley Beal, because there is always a third star that is on the trade block at the trade deadline because players go into a new contract, players don't like their team, players get unhappy, things like that happen. So I guess we'll have to see how the Lakers end up playing maybe until the trade deadline and don't be surprised if they trade a player like Kuzma if he's not performing as well for a third star on this team. But once again, if they don't end up with a star player in this year's free agency, they're going to have to make their bench really, really good. And I think it's an option. A guy that is not a star, but he has been a great player in the past and is also up in the air of what he'll do next season is DeAndre Jordan. Let's be honest, the Knicks are going young if they're not going to get a guy in this year's free agency, and considering Durant's injured, it seems very unlikely they're going to get a superstar player if they can't land Kyrie Irving. So, with that said, they may just go really young. And I think if the Knicks don't target anybody in free agency, they may just leave DeAndre Jordan hanging, and he could end up back in LA, and he could end up this time with the Los Angeles Lakers. Another guy is Thaddeus Young. He's a bench player or a starter. He plays great defense. And I think if you're going to play with LeBron James and Anthony Davis, you have to stretch the floor a little bit. While he's not the best shooter, he still can hit that mid-range shot and occasionally the three ball. He does average 6.5 rebounds and 2.5 assists this year. And I think Young will probably re-sign with the Indiana Pacers when Oladipo returns. They still have plenty of playoff potential. But if they don't offer him a contract, I think the Lakers could be a great fit for Thaddeus Young. This is another guy that once again has a lot of potential to be a six-man candidate or a starter, Nikola Mirotic. Now, he was a bit up in the air last year, got traded, ended up with the Bucks, and he really played well with the Bucks. The thing about the Bucks is that they just fell under the luxury tax this season, and they have to pay Malcolm Brogdon, they're going to pay Chris Middleton, who has a player option, and if they don't have enough money to get Miritich, then they may have to let him walk. He averaged 15 points and 7 rebounds this season, and I think he would be a great fit for the Lakers, especially because he can stretch the floor and hit the three ball. Now, I'm going to talk about two point guards, because the Lakers obviously need a point guard now, and Ricky Rubio was a guy that the Utah Jazz said... I don't think we're going to bring him back. So that means he's up on the block and he's in free agency. He averaged almost 13 points. We know how great of a facilitator he is. He can just be an easy replacement for Lonzo Ball. And his three-pointer has improved drastically. Ricky Rubio could be a great fit for the Lakers considering he is just a facilitator and he can shoot the three now. Another guy, and this is a completely different player, and I don't think he really has a chance to join the Lakers, but I'm going to name him anyway, and this is why. This guy, on the average, 7.6 points, 5 rebounds, and a steal. So you may be thinking those stats are not that great, but 5 rebounds as a point guard, and this guy is a defensive beast. And that's Patrick Beverly. Now, he's a two-time defensive player. Will he play with the Lakers? 
Probably not, because the Clippers will want to retain him, considering how they went last year. But the thing about the Clippers, if they end up chasing all those big names, such as Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant, they may not be able to bring him back. And if he does end up somehow in free agency, the Lakers could be a perfect choice because he can be a starter or a bench player for the Lakers and he would be a great fit considering his defense is amazing. Trevor Ariza. Ariza averaged 12.5 points and five and a half rebounds. Great defense. Trevor Ariza was up and down on teams last year. Traded from Houston, joined the Wizards, joined Phoenix. I think he needs to find a new team and I think it could be the Los Angeles Lakers, especially off the bench. He'd be a great fit. So those are the guys that I think they could target in this year's free agency. And if the Lakers do give Davis his trade bonus and they can renegotiate his salary to the max, that means then after six months, they can give him an extension, which in turn can help them out in the future. But right now, at this point in time, which is as I'm making this video, they have a roster with just five players. Mo Wagner, Isaac Bonga, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, and Kyle Kuzma. Obviously, with the Lakers having many players leave in this year's free agency and knowing that most of the players last season were at just a one-year rental, such as Rondo, Cadwell Pope, Tyson Chandler, JaVale McGee, Lance Stevenson, Reggie Bullock, and others, it's no surprise that this year's free agency will be huge for them, especially trying to get some depth this upcoming season. It almost seems like an NBA 2K roster where you just try and get that star player and then you just fill out your team with other players. That is what this season feels like. Of course, they kept Kyle Kuzma, and he will have to play his role extremely well, number one, so he doesn't get traded, and number two, if the Lakers just want to actually keep him as a third star. He needs to improve and become a better shooter, even better than he is at the moment. I'd say the next step for him to fit with this team is to become a better defender as well. He has to become an all-around better player, but ultimately, a defensive player is something he should work on. He needs to shoot better from the three-point range. He shot 30% from last season, but that will have to improve to 30 40%, which can happen because Kuzma definitely has the potential and he's only a second or now third year player in the league. LeBron and Davis own the paint, so Kuzma won't have a lot of time to get the shot off inside the paint, which means it's going to become more of an outside player. With that said, if you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe for more. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Follow me on Instagram, turn on notifications, and let's see if we can reach 1,000 likes for the next video. That will be on the Pelicans, but let me know what team after. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my other videos, and I'll catch you guys there. I am out. Peace.